What's up everyone, welcome back to EMC. I got a new project car, and yes, you guys have seen this particular model in previous vlogs before. However, this is going to be an entirely new build. It's going to be called the 997.2 Turbo RS. It's going to be my favorite build to date, and I got some bad news to share with everyone. My car now is dead. It's dead. I can't drive it, I can't start it, it doesn't move, doesn't work. I got it towed back here and I'm waiting for a new DME from the Porsche dealership. Before we get into the vlog, Empire Fest 2023 is coming up. December 9th, it's gonna be in Taizong Shui Guoji Sai Chang. We will have lots of raffles, prizes, giveaways, and of course, we will have the drifting show, but this time you can also buy tickets to experience drifting if you've never experienced it before. It's gonna be great, so I'll see you guys at Empire Fest. Last but not least, the weather's starting to get chilly, so we designed all new long sleeve tees in gothic old English style fonts. Starting to get popular again, just like 15 years ago. And we also have the Chinese armor pattern in a shield in the back. And back by popular demand, we have the EMC basketball shorts, also with the Chinese armor patterns on the bottom. Guys, get your tickets, go to empiremotorclub.com. Each ticket will actually be a rebate of 300 NTD at the EMC booth. Support us, be there. It's gonna be a beautiful and great event. So I'll see you guys there at Empire Fest. Let's get going. I know what you guys are gonna ask. Why did I go back to the 997.2 Turbo S? Well, for a multitude of reasons. First, I think that the size of the 997 is the perfect Porsche chassis. Uh, I've owned 964s all the way to 992s, and I do believe that the 997 is the sweet spot. The steering wheel on the 997s are actually still a lot heavier than the 9N1 and the 992s. And I also feel that the tunability of turbos are a lot more friendly than, you know, the modern turbos or the nationally aspirated cars. It has the PDK. This car was not cheap but not super expensive compared to, you know, the modern Porsches. And that's one of the reasons why I got this car, uh, because I can put a lot of money into the mods. My goal is to make this into a modern supercar killer, all right? And also, I feel like the 997.2s are priced at a very attractive zone right now, where it actually might be a good investment. From the dealer, there was only 12 in Taiwan. This car was manufactured as the last batch in November 2012, and it didn't get here until 2013. Literally, if you check all the database, this actually might be the very last 997.2 Turbo S before they started making the 991s. This year, the 997s just became an official Porsche Classic car. So that's pretty cool. I will be attending a lot of the Porsche Classic car events, so I'll see you guys there, but I want to give a special thanks to Xinzong in Taipei. Uh, I got this car from Xinzong and they were super friendly. They were super, super helpful. They found this car down south in Kaohsiung. And you know, they told me that this only had 16,000 km on it. And I was already like, okay, you know what? I need to see the car. This car had this beautiful body kit. This Tech R kit fully carbon fibered out. And I mean, the front hood looks like a 992 GT3 front hood. It has vents that go underneath the front bumper. So when the air goes through it, you know, the drag actually pushes the car down. So this was insane for 11, 12 years ago when Tech Art designed this. This was before the 992. And, you know, I just wanted to say thank you to Chou Dong and also Xiao Tang and Xiao Chuan for making this whole entire process very easy, super friendly. And I got to visit them at the shop when I picked up the car to see all their facilities, their service department, their mechanics, uh, everything they do from the ground up. I got to say, they're impeccable, they know what they're doing, and they provide great cars. And that's the most important. For a project car, you really gotta select something that has a great foundation, great structure for you to work off of. Because to be honest, it's a money pit, all right? You're gonna sink a ton of money into it, like I did. And the car is actually going to be in the shop 
more than in your garage or more than on the road. I haven't managed to get any road time and that kind of sucks because I ran into a brick wall. I ran into a huge problem. My car now is dead. It's dead. I can't drive it, I can't start it, it doesn't move, doesn't work. I got it towed back here and I'm waiting for a new DME from the Porsche dealership. So I'm stuck here waiting now because, well, there's nothing else I can do. But let's get into why all this happened. Well, like I said, I started planning for everything early in the year. All new suspension, all new interior. Exterior, I wanted to do a wrap, as you guys can see. I needed to fix a couple of carbon fiber parts. We were gonna get new wheels, new brakes, new PCCBs from the 991. And I actually wanted to get a new wing, a lot going on, and then all of the engine mods. I will get into everything on the next vlog, but this vlog is all about my problems with this build. You know, when it came time to getting in touch with Sam from By Design, which is my ECU tuner. By the way, he's a magician. He's a genius. Big ups to you, Sam, if you're watching. Uh, this is his IG right here. With Sam's tunes, it's super easy. He emails you a file. You basically download it onto the Cobb Access Manager, and then you install it into the OBD2, and voila, that's done. When all of the intercoolers from DO88 was installed, the wide pipe from DO88, the intake plenums, the inlet pipes, we got everything done with DO88. They even gave me like this new bypass valve that sounds like a blow off valve, which sounds amazing by the way. So thank you DO88. I was already super excited, super excited to get the tune. However, when we got done with the stage one, kind of have to use a stage one to match up and pair the ID of the stock computer, the stock map, and then send that over, we already found some weird fault codes in there and the CEL just kept coming back up. You know, all these weird lights would pop up. We realized that something was wrong with the computer and then that's when I decided to take it back to the dealership. You know, they plugged in the Porsche computer, they were checking out all the fault codes. A bunch of random fault codes came on, but they just kept telling me, they were like, dude, why do you have a US computer? And I was like, what do you mean? we're finding all the fault codes for US spec stuff. And I was just like, nah, I was like, this car came from the dealer, you guys. And they're like, yeah, it should be your spec, but all the codes and your VIN numbers and everything, it doesn't really match up. That scared the shit out of me. Nothing matched up. You know, I, I talked to Sam, I was like, yo, why did you put in a US map? And he's like, I didn't do that. Why would I do that? And I was like, is it Cobb? Did Cobb access port change everything because Cobb is from the US? You know, I was trying to find people to blame. I have to say, it wasn't Xingzong's fault. I have to make that clear. I bought it on my own terms and none of us saw it coming. You know, I should have done more due diligence. At the end, with the help of the Porsche dealership and Nehu, as well as Sam, they both believe that it was the previous owner who probably unplugged the computer, sent it to a US tuner, and then they changed the entire code to a US spec setting for a Euro spec car. And it set off a bunch of sensors. There's a lot of sensors in the US spec cars that are not existent on Euro spec cars. I think that was the problem. We tried to flash the computer, the DME, back to Euro spec setting, and they warned me. They told me that it could only be flashed a couple times. And if it didn't work, the computer was gonna die. But I had to take that chance. So we uninstalled Sam's by design tune. So it was the stock tune or whatever tune that it was before that was already tuned. And then we tried to reflash it and boom, it died. Goodbye DME, goodbye ECU, goodbye project car. Yeah. That sucked, my heart sank. I was like, oh my God, my head. I was like, oh, I was about to burst because I didn't know what to do. It was out of my control. It was out of anyone's control. So I had to spend a shitload of money buying another stock computer. But you know what? That's the reality of car builds. And that's what we have to face. And this is why I'm making this video because I wanna to talk to you guys about it. And I want you guys to make sure that you guys get the proper tuner that you guys know where you're taking your car to to get it tuned because that guy is super, super fucking important. 
Guys, if you understand me, leave a comment. If you don't understand me, leave a comment. If you wanna hate on me, leave a comment. But if you're supportive and you love me, leave a comment. Subscribe, share with all your friends. Let everyone know that we do have a new project car in the works. This is gonna be the 997.2 Turbo RS. Pray for me guys, hopefully everything will work out. I'm gonna stay in touch with Sam. I'm gonna stay in touch with the Porsche dealership and Nehu. Guys, keep watching Empire Motor Club. Keep supporting us. And hopefully we'll get some answers soon. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.